everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over kind of an overall baseball process video, and I'm going to be using opening day as the kind of the template to describe this. Um, I just was kind of up, and I decided to do this. I don't know exactly where it's going to show up in the content, but this is really kind of a two-part series um, with respect to how I recommend building baseball lineups using the tools available to you on TrueDFS. Uh, one, part one, this video is going to be how to make lineups yourself. Um, and then part two, which is gonna be in a separate video, is going to be how to use SaberSim or other optimizers to build lineups for you, which is an art in and of itself. Um, but this video is going to be how to build lineups yourself um, using the tools and numbers and data available to you. And this is the way I would do it if I were hand building, which I still do uh, sometimes, depends on what I'm gonna be entering. So there are two main files that you will have access to on TrueDFS. Uh, one is a projection file and the other is a stacks file. Um, what we're looking at now is the projection file, which just lists all of the players uh, by team, position, salary, uh, projected fantasy points. Um, I have a couple of other metrics here. I have point per dollar in column G. I have sheets value score in column H, which is, you know, kind of proud of this number. It's what I use to, to combine both point per dollar and actual raw points to give a good assessment of what type of value the guy actually is, then uh, projected ownership. And then these other columns, which I'm including for baseball, are a standard deviation of, of, of fantasy points and standard deviation of, of ownership. What this basically does is give you an idea of how tight I think these numbers are. In other words, uh, the lower the standard deviation, then probably the more likely uh, that these numbers are good. You know what I mean? Not that they're going to actually land there, but there's just not some wild outlier projection that's slanting it one way or another. And likewise with ownership, we have a standard deviation of ownership, which means that, you know, it, it, if, if you have a, a number that has a real high standard deviation, then maybe that, that ownership projection is fragile. You know, it maybe it's not necessarily going to be that accurate. Um, so it's a good way, I mean, for kind of advanced players to really gauge what these, you know, what these numbers are all about. And this is your DFS ID, which is going to help the optimizer. Um, if you want to use it to, you know, use our optimizer on TrueDFS. So this is the big projection file here. And, and then the other file, which we're going to get to in, in a minute, is the, is the stacks file, which, um, you know, as you know, or as you hopefully know, Play multiple players, multiple hitters from the same team is very important in baseball just because of the way the scoring system works. And, you know, when one guy gets a hit, it's likely that if the guy, if another guy's on base and they knock him in, they're both going to get points out of it. So you want to stack these teams as much as you can. Um, and, and so I made a separate file specifically for stacks, which we will go over how to interpret it in a minute. Um, so the first thing, so there's two, there's three real main things that you need to accomplish in building a baseball lineup. And that is to get your pitchers. That's number one, get your stacks. That's number two, and then get your one-offs, meaning the, the, the players that are not going to fit within your stacks. Um, and I do like to kind of do each thing separately. Before I do that, I do like to get an overall look at the, the projection file first to see if there's any incredible standout from the positions. You know, like right now you see Robinson Cano as a flat 2K um, showing up as a, you know, kind of an elite value play. So it's something to think about, you know, we, we didn't build anything yet, but it's something to think about. And then you have a uh, Yael Antuna, who was also a flat 2K, who is going to rate as a really strong value play. So let's, let's keep those in mind as we you know, dive into the rest of the analysis here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-rank these guys by position so that we can get the pitchers. Now, normally the pitchers 
it's you don't really have to do this because the pictures are usually near the top um and it's just a matter of just overlooking one or two position players to get these guys ranked but just to show you that you can do this i mean within true dfs you can do this this way as well you can re-rank everything by position here and you can get them ranked this way and yeah so but i am going to go back to this top view just so i can see what all these columns are and you'll see for tomorrow's slate, for example, that Shane Bieber has a significant edge over the next best pitcher. And that, you know, in Sheets value score, he's close to a 40 when Wainwright and, and Otani are 33 and 31, and then a little dip to Max Fried at 28. So Shane Bieber is really looking like kind of a standout uh, SP1 or let's just say first pitcher, you know, um, so that's the first thing. And then, as I mentioned, you know, it seems like kind of straightforward here, forward here. You have, you know, Wainwright, Otani kind of in a sort of a tier of their own. And then, you know, you can consider Freed up there and kind of a drop down to Darvish. And then after that, you're really dropping a little bit more down to Male, things like that. So, what I would do for a slate like this is I would say, okay, I'm going to take Bieber and then one of these next two guys between Wainwright and, and Otani. And what I would say is that given how, how close they are in value score, the next, um, the next metric I would look at is the, is ownership. You know, if, if it's close, I'll go with the guy with the lowest owned, the lowest ownership. And that would be Otani here. So, so for me, um, it would be, going Bieber and then going Otani. Now you'll notice before we even get into the hitting that we have picked two pretty chalky pitchers, one being the most chalky on the slate and the other being, you know, you know, 20%. So not to say that you can't play them, but what, what I would advise in, in tournaments is if you're going to do this with your pitchers to, to not play stacks that are going to be overwhelmingly popular as well. Um, so again, we're just thinking about that as we dive into the rest of the analysis. So the next thing I want to do before I go back into these one-offs is, is pull up the, the stacks file. Okay. So I, I just want to go over again, what all this means for those of you who are not here last year. And I think that the tutorial I made on this might be sufficiently buried <laughs> among the content. So just so that you have it in front of you again, we'll probably move this new one up to the top. And what, what I've done here is I've ranked each of the teams by three different value metrics, okay? Um, so let's like review what they are. On the left, you have them ranked by just raw points. In other words, which five-man stack and that's what we're doing for, for, for DraftKings, five man. FanDuel, we're going to do four man. But DraftKings, five man. Which five man stack from each of these teams is going to produce or rates to produce the most raw points? Okay. And that's all that yellow does. This yellow column is it picks out the five top scorers and then adds them all up. And that's what your raw stack rating is, okay? Um, and then to the right, I call this raw own. That, that is the overall projected ownership of those five players, okay? Um, so, for example, ranking these by the, the yellow columns, you see the Mets rate to have the best raw points. That doesn't mean that they're the best play necessarily, but the best raw points, not counting counting salary or anything like that. Um, and then you'll see second, it'd be San Diego. And, you know, the actual players are listed here. And then pretty close with Washington. And then kind of a big drop to, say, Arizona. Actually, we're not ranking them by Washington, sorry. So Mets, then, San Di then a drop to San Diego, Washington sort of tied with Atlanta. It's all pretty well tied underneath the Mets who are kind of standing out, okay? As far as raw points go, then you'll see raw ownership 
interestingly, they're not the, the, the highest owned. They're, they're projecting to be the second highest owned below uh, San Diego. So um, you know, in a vacuum, you'd think the Mets would be a really, really good play if you're ranking them by just raw points. So then in the middle, you have value, you ranking them by value, okay? And all this means, all this calculation is doing is points per dollar. That's literally all it is, okay? Um, so when you're ranking these guys, all you're doing is taking the top five values on the board for that team as a, for a point per dollar basis. And whichever one comes up the best, you know, is going to be, um, is going to be ranked the highest. And that's it. Uh, not very complicated, but just to give you a different look. And interestingly, when you rank these by values, you get the Mets as well, you know. Uh, and you get Padres next. So not a lot of difference in this slate. Now on the right is, is when we combine the two and we rank them by modified stat. Now, if you've been paying attention, you might gather what modified stat does. What modified stat does is basically add up the sheets value scores um, from the projection files. And by team, it'll pick out the five best um, uh, players for rated by sheets value score. And then we'll get this modified stack score. Um, so here, you'd also get the Mets being the top modified stack uh, ranking as well. So the Mets would be the top stack across the board. Um, I don't know if it is important to go over this, but I, th I think it somewhat is. You know, what this type of stack rating does not do, which you could consider this a, not to say flaw, but just something it doesn't do, is it doesn't take into account, you know, lineup order. In other words, it's just the five best, well, it sort of does. Well, you think about this. It just takes the five highest projected players without regard for whether they're going to be one, two, three, four, five, one, three, seven, two, nine, two, or whatever. But that doesn't really matter because the batting order and the projected batting order is something that is sort of baked into projections anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, so when I'm looking at this slate, it seems pretty clear that the Mets would be stat that I would want. It, it rates number one in all three columns. However, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to necessarily play the chalkiest stat with the chalkiest pitching, right? So maybe what we want to do is, is, see, is see if there's anybody close that is going to be significantly lower owned. And so you could go down to the Padres and get a, the second best stack, which is, and then, you know, get much better ownership. But what you really could do is go down a little bit further. You know, you're going to give up some projection integrity here, right? Like if you go down to, to um to the Washington people, you know, you uh you know you don't have as good of a cheat value score. You don't have as good, you know, but it's close enough such that at half the ownership of the Mets, uh, perhaps Washington is actually where you're supposed to go if you're going to be pairing stacks with with popular pitchers. Or if you want it to go even lower than that, you can go down to, to, to Arizona. But I feel as though just analyzing this slate that Washington with DeSoto and Nelson Cruz and Hernandez Bell would probably be the best combination of, of good value and low ownership to pair with those chalky pitchers. So that's the next step is to, in using this data to, to come up with, with your lineup is, is you, now you have your pitchers, you have your staff. And then what you got to do is then you figure out what, what else to, to, you know, how to fill in the rest of your lineups. And very simply, I just think you should go back into the projection file and then you step that that's when you start ranking them just by, you know, by points per dollar or buy sheets value score, and then just kind of fill in the positions that you want. Um, now, here is the, uh, here's kind of the trick where you do have to know a little bit of baseball to make this work. 
Um, this is important. You know, not all medians are created equal. In other words, you'll see all these guys that that have projections. They're very, very close. Six, seven, seven, six. And when you're playing one-offs, you I'd rather you give up a little bit of media of median projection equity to get that home run upside. You know, like you see a guy like I don't know, what's Antonia, for example, you know, he's not that he probably probably doesn't have that much power as opposed to say Aristides Aquino, who we know can really hit a lot of home runs. So when you're playing these one-offs, you really want to defer to the guys that do have that home run upside, or at the very least have some stolen base upside. You don't want the one-offs to come from, you know, guys that just hit little singles and doubles and things like that. Um, so that is pretty much it with respect to how to utilize the sheets here to build your lineups. Um, and if you wanted to apply that to tomorrow's slate, as, as I recommended, you know, something like Bieber with either Wainwright or, or, or Tani with, and, and if you were going to add a stack to that, while the Mets and then the Padres would be, the, you know, the best stacks, in general, you want to just be a little bit different when you're playing chalky pitchers. So, so probably something like, what did I say? The um, maybe the, the the Washington, maybe the Nationals would fit the bill. Um, I hope that helps. And in another video, I don't know if I'll get it done by tomorrow, but at some point, I'll go over how to use SaberSim to help uh, to access technology to build lineups for you. I hate to use the word for you because you do have to submit a lot of uh, proprietary input <laughs> and then you still do have to man you know, manage these things, but, but it, it certainly is a different pr process than what we just went through. Um, so that'll do it for now. And uh, is there any banks who say, let's play too.